Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Ghost Auto. And we're looking at a Toyota Estima Emina. Now the Emina is the narrow version of the Estima that um, in the USA we didn't get. We got the Toyota Previa, which was the Estima of this generation. This one here is, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 centimeters narrower. And then this one comes with a five-speed manual and a diesel with four-wheel drive. And so kind of is quite a unique and quite a cool vehicle here. Now I'm gonna turn the engine off. Engine works fine, AC works. All the mechanical pieces, they all work good. Um, I tested those in the other video, but I'm gonna turn it off because it's a diesel and our neighbor was already not happy about an RX-7 we had earlier. And so I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't want her to be that angry at me. I have to do work here. Anyway, so we'll be doing a review of the condition of this one. It's bought from auction for exports to the USA under the 25 year import rule. And yeah, you can't get cooler than this in terms of a hipster vehicle. Um, I don't know if that would be a derogatory way to call this, but it is very appealing to, to myself and to a lot of other people. It also has dual cool sunroof on the top. I actually didn't test those and I'll have to. Um, maybe I'll do it later in this video. Okay, so, um, Engine wise, it's a 2.2 uh, liter diesel engine. It's mounted midship or like uh, in the middle, which is kind of cool. The uh, Estimas had a gasoline engine and then the later models got a supercharged engine, which is very cool. Mid engine supercharged, four wheel drive minivan. Yeah, it's cool. Lots of visibility around you, lots of light because of the sunroof. Diesel engine, it's super cool. Let's go over the auction inspection sheet and I'll translate this for you. So it's four wheel drive, Estima. They didn't call it an Emina, but it's clear by looking at it that it is one. So you can see the four wheel drive badge in the back, Estima Emina. And it is weird, like usually when they make two different versions of a car, maybe they'll make one longer version, one shorter, a la seven series. Um, but very rarely will they make it narrower because usually the platform isn't able to compress sideways like that and I guess they they expected that to be a thing with this platform and so they built it into it very cool that that they did that and then a lot of people just won't realize that this is a narrower version of it based on the looks because it's it's a narrower but it's not that much narrower it would look so cool on some knobbly tires with a lift especially with some over fenders on, on it to bring it back up to the the width of the, the regular one is Okay, so it's actually rated 3.5 with an interior C and an exterior C. It says engine is a 3C model. You can look that up if you want. The five-speed manual is very cool. I didn't even realize you can get the five-speed manual with the diesel. 72,437 kilometers on the odometer. And then the report here says windshield rock chip, interior scratched, dirty and wear. It's actually really clean. End panel dented. That's um, this piece under here, underneath the rear bumper. Various scratches, dents, scuffs, steering wheel has a cover on it, carpet has stains in it, door mirror and um, rear cover scratched, uh, uh, wheel covers, pardon me, and it's missing one of the wheel covers. Uh, underside has been painted, and then the body is actually pretty clean, it has, um, I had to make a quick edit there because ran out of batteries. Anyways, um, yeah, these sheets are generally pretty reliable. Uh, uh, explanation of the condition of the car. It is weird that the uh, the dents weren't mentioned on there, but let me just show you that right now. And so the dents are right here, and that's basically all the damage on the car. And as you can see going down here, the side panels don't have paint wave, or uh, I mean the paint condition looks to be quite nice as well. Okay, I'm going to do the once around here. I'm going to wait for this man to walk by so I'm not putting him on the internet. <clears throat> okay. And uh, because the condition is pretty good, there's not really much to take a look at here other than, I guess, the dimensions of it. When I was a, a young child, my aunt had a Previa, and I used to think it was so cool and futuristic because it was one of the first Japanese cars that I was uh, used to being around um, that was modern. And so I just thought, wow, it's so cool. It's like a spaceship. <laughs> And I guess they didn't really like the uh, going with that style because uh, they split off the van in America to the Japanese van. They continued with the Estima here for multiple generations um, past this, this one being the first. Whereas in the USA, they got the larger um, Sienna, 
minivan, which is really big, and, and they don't have that here. Okay, so there are a couple of stickers here. Uh, this one here would be a handicap sticker, and then this one here would be the old people's sticker. So after you're past a certain age in Japan, you have to display that you're old. And it's kind of funny because in a lot of... Um, I've, I've heard so many people, myself included, thinking, man, you should... You should be able to say when your grandpa or your grandma when you're driving to everyone else so that they know that you're a hazard in the same way that in Canada we have what's called a new driver's signal that signa signifies that you're not a very good driver yet but they have that in Japan always ahead of the curve so there's a big scuff along here a little bit of surface rust with the paint cracks there and then I'm just showing you the, uh, the scratches on the bumpers really the worst part of the car but a pretty easy thing to fix because it's not on metal it's on plastic this one here is being the, the biggest of them all quickly show you the back here okay so a fair amount of space in the back those seats don't go forward and back like most of them do and so you have I mean, you're stuck with less options, but at the same time, you do get a lot of trunk space in the back here. And then you can fold these up to the sides if you wanted to. The only thing that you're missing is a little bit of leg room here. Some people like to push these seats as far back as they can go in order to have leg room in things like the High Ace or the next version of the Estima. But I guess in this earlier version, you wouldn't have been able to do that. If you do need the extra leg room, though, you can push these ones forward and you've got plenty of space in front of those in order to give you space there. You can see from the back here also the sunroofs. Very cool and modern. Must have been like uh, here in Japan in the uh, late 80s and early 90s were definitely a special time. And I really, I'm sad I didn't get to actually experience that. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a shove in order to get it to go in properly. This one here is a mirror that you can see from the rear view mirror to see how far away your rear bumper is. Very useful for when you're backing into a tight parking spot. So go to the front section here, and this is an original door visor piece. Door visor is very popular in Japan, possibly because of how much it rains here and how many people smoke cigarettes. Now the interior of this one doesn't smell like cigarettes and that's a good thing. Perhaps that's how he lived uh, long enough to have the old person's mark on his car. Note also here, it says, um, because this is a turbocharged vehicle, it's very important for you to change the oil. And you have to use special oil for, for diesel cars if this is your first diesel. Or if you've never had a diesel before. Because it has to be able to conceal the contaminants in a different way than a gasoline one does. Okay, so seats are in great condition. It's an odd placement of the e-brake. But I guess it frees up more space on the um, center console area. Cool carpets here. I love it. It's, it's, like, it's like the basement of 70s house in a good way and just the amount of glass like huge windshield big triangle window there and basically everywhere that you can see has glass so it makes it really easy to drive plus flat sides make it very easy to park a lot of these new cars because of the cool styling on them they'll like taper in at the back or come out or have cool designs whatever it is i, I find them much harder to park straight than something with a straight side this one here is a cool and hot box. Again, Japan getting the good things that they're not giving to everyone else. Cool is good for drinks. You can put like cans in there. And then see those six little slots? That's like Japanese canned coffee size because canned coffee are really popular here. Now you could put other size cans in there, but you wouldn't be able to put a full six in there unless it's Japanese size canned coffee. And that's why you have the hot section because, you know, since... I don't know since how long, but um, forever Japan has had like hot coffee from vending machines. Okay, tape deck, CD player, that would be the original CD player. Uh, this works. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> the car works when you, you know, shift it. This is a shifter. Um, but the clutch is a little bit stuttery unless you have RPM high enough. And so probably the clutch is going to need to be replaced pretty soon. Uh, you wouldn't need to do it right away. But um, oddly, that car has the exact same problem. Love the way that this sunroof looks. Let's open that up and then see I hope the neighbor doesn't come out. She's angry. Today she was like, every day, every day you're shooting reports. And I wanted to tell her, I'm sorry for being popular and cool, but I don't think that she, <laughs> I don't think that she would think that that's very funny. Oh, here I am closing the door when what I want is 
the sunroof to be open. How do you open that? That's a little bit odd. Usually it's up here for sunroof controls. But since I can't find it, what I'm gonna do is go into the back section here and there will be a secondary control for somebody who's in the back that wants to move the sunroof. Here we go. So probably there's a control on the dashboard, I just don't, don't know where it is. Okay, and we get to stand up here. Man, being a child of the 80s, having a sunroof that you can stand up through, makes me feel like you're in a limousine. Okay. <laughs> it kind of looks like it has like uh, ears on the top. There's uh, two little black things. Okay, so onto the rear section. So it looks like, I haven't tested this, but it looks like seats can collapse into a sleepable bed. And then lots of room in here. Here's the interior staining that they were talking about. And it looks to be pretty bad, uh, to be honest. You might be able to dye that to a darker color if you really wanted to get rid of it. And then getting into the back, you pull this. I don't really like that style compared to other styles, but it works. And then it's kind of hard to put the seat back into the position that you want. You have to pull this, lean back, AC vents down there, and AC vents up there. And then you have to push this back. I guess it's not a lot. And then the rear seat in a van like this is not used that often. So, Okay, so that's going to be the end of the review here. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and have a nice day.